Greetings and salutations everyone. It is time once again for another Road Least Taken video. This time we're actually going to be doing the uh, the Bloody Crypt, or as I like to call it, the Bloody Sea. I don't know why, but uh, I, for whatever reason on the hardcore server I couldn't spell Crypt that day. And it just kept coming out super jumbled, so I just changed it to the Bloody Sea. And, uh, and then now it's stuck. So... All right, uh, before we dive into the actual uh, gameplay slash quest here, I want to take a second and talk to you guys about a couple of the different bits that go along with uh, Necro 1 and into 2 and into 3, etc. The first is, I probably should have pulled up the wiki for this in advance, but that's all right. Um, the first is the fact that you can... Um, there's some gems, right? Hang on, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to look these up a little bit. Why? Uh, why I figured it out? But uh, there, there are um, two two different quests here, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And you can take one at a time. You can get a silver flame nugget. Um. I've lost my silver flame amulet. Yes, please. And it, it's a little gem. Or you can get a... Um, or you can get the Emer Emerald Claw Nugget. And you get a... You get a choose. Um, I'm trying to... Find the quest here. Here we go. Here, here it is. Blink. All right, so Silver Flame Nugget. Uh, it starts out here, Necro 1. And the reason why it matters and why I'm kind of doing it as part of this training video is because uh, the Bloody Crypt, the Curse Crypt, and the whatever the third one's called. I can't remember off the top of my head. Or the second one. The Shadow Crypt. That's it. The second one, Shadow Crypt. Uh, you can upgrade these necklaces, so or nuggets into a necklace, and so on and so forth. So, usually, if I decide I'm going to carry one around, I pick it up now uh, before going into the uh, into the Bloody Crypt. Now, you can when you upgrade it at the end of Bloody Crypt, it becomes a Silver Flame Amulet, which has one charge Y worn of negative energy absorption. Doesn't sound that great because it's not that great. Um, but, you know, in the Wayback Machine, this is what we had for negative energy absorption. Uh, the second upgrade in the Shadow Crypt upgrades it to five charges a day and gives a death, death block. And then the third upgrade can uh, gives it ten charges, death block, and protection from evil. And then inside the Abbot Raid, you can upgrade it one more time and turn it back in to uh, to the same person that gave it to you, and he'll give you one of these one of these items. They're actually kind of cool. They're not great uh, anymore. I don't know if they ever were great. Um, I recently just got rid of a couple of these Cloth of the Faithful because they were Night Shield clickies. Um, but yeah, they're 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 okay. They're not they're not awesome by any stretch of the imagination. Now you can do the same thing on the Emerald Clay Emerald Claw Nugget version, except instead you get a Claw's Fear, Symbol of Fear, uh, Intimidates, Diplomacy, and Fearsome, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, and they have corresponding items. So I'm gonna take a minute and take a look through um, through that here. And see if there's one of these two uh, necklaces that you want to look at for your for your own self. Um, personally, I've actually gotten to the point where if I take one of these and level it up, it's almost always the Emerald Claim one, uh, the Emerald Claw one. Uh, no particular reason other than the fact that I feel like the the stats are actually more useful. It, you generally end up having someplace else where you slide in Death Block. Um, it's easy to find someplace else to put in 
some sort of absorption effect. And honestly, I don't even I don't even deal with that that often. So usually I don't even bother with these anymore. But you can, you can indeed. Uh, and you cannot feed these items to your sentient necklace ever. Uh, you can't if you turn it in for a for like an actual item, like one of the armors or something. You can turn it in. Does that make sense? Clear as mud, probably. Uh, the other thing is as you're going through the quests. Uh, you're picking up these different Is it this guy? It's this guy. The scarabs. And uh, You're not gonna not gonna give me the opportunity to Here we go. Uh, so as you go through the quest you'll there's five different scarabs in the end chest. If you take each of those and go squish them into a um, into a powder, you get this uh, various ghost or uh, scare powders, which actually have some interesting items that drop out of here. Uh, so you can get a plus two ghost touch longbow. You can get a trinket that gives you some undead guard um, and some turn untid attempts, etc., etc. Again, look these things up; they're they're interesting and. Some of them are actually very, very good, or used to be very, very good. Now they, they kind of dropped off. But um, again, as I was going through and cleaning stuff up, I even had a middle level um, trinket. And that was like five slash good guard, or five slash good um, damage reduction and, and like a pretty hefty undead guard. So it was, they are useful. They are useful. All right, anyway, let's start the Bloody Crypt, or again, as I sometimes call it, the Bloody Sea. This thing's a little bit on the long side. Um, Dedor is a, is a real boon uh, because we're going to run, um, we're gonna be running around quite a bit, but uh, we're not gonna worry about it too much. Oh, you know what I didn't do that I meant to do? We're coming in here. Put on my, my good, my good root arm. I'm a real big fan of of this root arm. It's actually probably my favorite root arm in the game right now. The astral projector. Uh, the fact that it gives ghostly sometimes is really really important, but mostly that you have disrupting weapons at level seven is huge, huge. You're on attack mode, right? In town. Wow, double fury burst. Nice. We'll uh, give our hireling an opportunity to pull a lever and see if he can do it. Did it. So proud of him. Alright. We're gonna eat that heart. Eat that. Thought I saw another shiny bit. Okay. So this quest basically drops down or breaks down into four pretty close to the same same hallways. They're not identical, but they're they're close enough. They have the similar elements. Uh, two to the east and two to the west. And uh, for whatever reason, I tend to go to the west first. I think it's because um, a long, long time ago, uh, when I actually had people that were more often in my level range than currently. Like right now, it seems like. Either I'm ahead of everybody or behind everybody. Depends on... Uh, nobody ever seems to be in my same range any longer. But... Uh, or exactly my range anymore. But... Uh, in the Wayback Machine, we used to be able to divide pretty evenly into two groups. And I was almost always assigned to go to the West. Just because... As a wizard, uh, you can cast D-Door and stuff like that at level 7 
and it seems like the distances are slightly further away on this one than the other one. A um, little bit, a little bit more running to and from. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is that there are a couple of random chests located through relatively, relatively uh, random and sporadically through the quest. Uh, just keep an eye out. They're just free trigger. I hear that's okay. Alright, we got one creeper to ow. Guy really did get cracked right there, didn't he? Nobody Nobody knows the sorrow I keep. All right, I should also grab some red scrolls for the hirelings. I think, actually, no, it wouldn't matter. We have to be level nine, I think, to use red scrolls, right? All right, let's actually pause Ellery back here, get one more heal out of her tear down this hallway I really do like having a arcane hireling whenever kind of it makes sense uh, because I'm not gonna be sitting here casting spells all that often and I could be using like my fireball rune arm but having ghost touch is just so good in a quest filled with undead um, so having somebody who can just it doesn't matter can just spam spam whatever random attack spell they happen to be casting I'm pretty okay with it all right so we have to pull these levers uh, to open this room uh, you, you, the goal is to go into the corresponding rooms and uh, pull the various torch Ooh, multiple casters that are champs uh, plus uh, plus some more shenanigans but you can't pull the levers until until the room is clear of trash. I guess I should mention that. Uh, let's see, what else is important? Oh, those three guys. So each hallway has three priests to the corresponding hallway. So like, uh, this is what, the Sanguine Path? The Burning Path, the Burning Path. So, um, there are three high priests of the burning path. And if you are really paying attention from the previous uh, quests that kind of go along with this, the um, the, the, the initial parts, usually somewhere near the end, each each one of those four quests has one of the uh, one of the priests in there. So again, they, they're all basically the same in the sense that there's a hallway, some sort of middle, middle, col middle, middle column, and uh, some sort of force field that you have to lower by pulling an appropriate lever. Again, we just want to keep an eye out on on trash here in general. Uh, another thing I guess you could say to take note of in this quest is that these guys will leash. So if it's just you by yourself, um, you can in fact just run past things and wait for them to leash and the dungeon alert will go back down. Um, it doesn't mean that you can just run all the way through the quest in general, but it certainly helps. Uh, on each side, there is a room with a. One of the hallways has an optional. I guess I should have looked. And one of the hallways has a. 
for the, the shrine. The shrine, I think, is in the same hallways as the optional. And then, um... Yeah, there you go. I guess that's enough. There's a, there's a shrine on each... On, uh... One to the left and one to the right, or one to the east and one to the west, depending on how you're looking at your mini map, I suppose. That's what I'm trying to say. Also be on Front Street here. I am not feeling very well. Last uh, couple hours, I'm starting to feel pretty, pretty ill. So apologies if I, if I get real random. I think, I think we can go straight. Nice. It's our third little like freebie chest. Nope, not straight. to the lever. The uh, shrine will be over here on the map. Actually, I can lower this. It was pure pandemonium. tornado. Shar Nation, pure pandemonium. Okay. Force field's down. Let's actually make sure Ellery is safe. Uh, when the force field goes down, the monsters that are inside can start wandering around a little bit. Better to be safe than sorry when it comes to, when it comes to Ellery here. Not that I don't think my sweet level 3 hireling can hold her own, but uh, she's a lady and I want to protect her and make sure that she's safe and sound as always. No, it's... She's a little out of her weight class. <laughs> Just a little bit. Alright, the other thing to you know, kind of think about here is that because this is a spiral, you might want to, uh, to take a look at the Look at the map when you're starting to move around to figure out the best way to, to get in and out of this out of the zones, especially if you can't just detour. Um, I can't, so obviously I'm going to take a second and look at the map, make sure things are lined up well. And we're also going to come down this way to the the shrine. So if there's going to be an optional, he would be here on this side. mode then I'm gonna tell them both to shrine here I'm not gonna worry about shrining myself but for both of them to sleep all right uh, we are approximately 45% done with the quest now it's just a matter of running forever back to the middle and doing the other side and then from there we, we do the mid tool so again, if you would imagine that somebody equally levels of competent was able to do their side, then 
You need to be in great shape. So long, so much running. So I mean, though, if you could just detour there, snap. Wherever you go, you'd be there. A uh, little bit of a tip. Um, there's a right and a left from the front door. Pick which direction you're going to come in on. If you do have D-doors, and just always come in that way. See, one last batch of monsters that you have to clear out. Alright, let's play the run past these guys game for a second. And see if... Uh, See if we can successfully show you what I'm talking about with the dungeon alert going down. Normally in a quest, monsters would follow you to the end of the world, or into the earth, but they should leash right around here. They already leashed. Yeah, see, we see a bunch of them leashing there. There are several doors linked to the souls of the monsters, but usually they're very close to the door that that uh, you need to take out. Hi, would you like to start zapping monsters? There we go. Good on. poorly. That was the shrine one on this side, not the drop the force field so uh, cubby. The uh, another little chest. I don't think I've seen this many of them in quite a while, which means they're Probably normally around, I just have not paid that close of attention. I think the Famine Reaper is probably the most dangerous of the group, right? And the champion red name cat or pink name caster. Orange name, whatever color name that guy is.
Reaper decided to get scary, huh? Alright, Flare just drank his potion. And we wanna go this way. See what I mean? Finding the, the quickest out sometimes is important. So we're gonna go to the inside side. Inside side. So we're gonna go ahead and let Flare shrine here, I think. Sleep like a little boy, boy. Well, a little robot boy, boy. Okay, he's back. Uh, we ran past some trash, so we'll we'll expect to run through trash again. Although this is where they leashed, right? Yeah, we should be good. Colonel packed immortal heart guy, huh? Nice. Skyboard immortal heart guy. Nice. have one lever to pull and one more light. And we gotta go find a dude in his heart in a box. It's like inappropriate stuff in a box except your heart. Yeah. Where you uh, put your heart in the you get a box, you put your heart in the box, you give the box to the girl. That's pretty sure how that works. Don't know if that's the entire story of this, uh, how this particular quest goes, but I'm pretty sure that's close. Then the girl didn't want his heart, so then he had to keep it. Oh, this is embarrassing. Was it right there the whole time, right at the beginning? See, I don't know this side as well as I know the other side again. I feel like I'm constantly sent the other way slash I volunteer to go the other way chest that's five five bonus chests not to mention like champ chests or reaper chests how you want to think of them Pretty good I'm out of range. Thank you. Stand still as well, and then run through the trash, and we'll talk about the end room just a little bit as we get closer.
There's all that trash I ran past earlier. Alright, so let's talk about this end room. First of all, there's a nice shrine here if you need it. Uh, makes life a little easier. But as you can see, this room is divided into numerous levels, right? And what we have to do, what we've got to do is, is we got to find the vampire's heart and drive a stake through it. Pretty much classic vampire nonsense. Um, so it's in one of these boxes, or sarcophagus high. So what I like to do is I like to take a character that's got a reasonable spot skill. Like I do. And then you can just run around. If not, you have to click all these little, all these different uh, boxes. And eventually you'll, you'll find it by doing that. Personally, again, I find it to be a big pain to have to play the click on every box game. But, you know, you do what you have to. The stones at your feet are that's the message we're looking for. So now that we oops, put you up here. Ah, oh, he was fighting some real trash, huh? He's working hard. Alright, so now that we find the guy's heart, now he can be defeated. Uh, and like most vampires, he'll teleport around and be real annoying. This may actually be the place to fire off. Nope. Good dealio. Alright. So to complete the quest, now the vampire's defeated, we, we click on the book. It's pretty easy going. Um, if you have one of those nuggets on you, you would click the altar. Otherwise, it'll say the altar sits lifeless. A important note is that uh, you can only upgrade your necklace once per quest. But depending on which quest you're in, you can take your necklace up to that up to that level. So um, if you think of this quest, the Bloody Crypt is level 1. Uh, you can, the, the highest you can make your necklace by doing the Bloody Crypt quest is level 1. If you think of um, the Shadow Crypt as level 2, the highest you can take that necklace is to level 2. Which means you can take a level 0 necklace, run the Shadow Crypt, take it to level 1, rerun Shadow Crypt, take it to level 2. Makes sense? Clear as mud, same thing. With the Cursed Crypt, you can take it to level 3. And obviously the Raid, you can take it to all the way to level 4. But it uh, seems inefficient if you want to make an item level 4 to run run just the raid 4 times to upgrade the item but hey maybe you're running the raid anyway maybe you are alright so that's the bloody crypt aka the bloody sea hope you guys enjoyed yourself if you did please hit the like subscribe follow buttons etc etc I really appreciate it aw boo if that was like vorpal keen I would be all over it but it's not and uh, as always, I've taken this as part of my Twitch.tv stream. So uh, please consider joining us live over there. All right, everyone. Thanks for hanging out with us tonight. I appreciate it. We'll see you again real soon. Toodles.